Okay, so for this month's newsletter, we're gonna be talking about exercise efficiency. So one of the things, if we were to ask most people, uh, why are you not in the kind of shape that you wanna be in? The majority of people are gonna say, well, you know what, I'm, I'm just too busy, I don't have time. Between work and family, I just, I just can't fit the workout in. Uh, but when we talk to a lot of our patients and ask what they do, uh, we find a lot of the stuff they do takes a long time. They, it takes maybe 45 minutes or an hour Plus, and then when you look factor in travel time, we're talking like well over an hour and a half, two hours plus of, of exercise time. That's tough to fit in the schedule. So I think unless you're doing something that you absolutely love that's time consuming, meaning you know that hour long run is like your favorite part of the day, well that, that's fine, we're not gonna get rid of that. But if we're trying to find out the most time efficient way to exercise, there's a lot of options out there that people are not aware of and when we explain one of those options to them, people are just, it blows their mind. So we're gonna have Rashad, one of our kinesiologists here at Physio at Oakville, he's gonna demonstrate a two minute workout that mo knocks most people on their butt. It's two minutes that a lot of people, frankly, don't finish. So when we say two minutes, well, like that's ridiculous. We see people do an hour long spin classes. Uh, you're gonna see what happens to Rashad in the next two minutes and you're gonna realize there's no way he could keep that up for an hour. Um, so we steal some of this from different elements. Uh, hockey teams use this a lot. The machine we're gonna use for this is an Airdyne bike. Um, this gets used in things like uh, NHL prep, uh, CrossFitters use it quite a bit. We stole kind of something from CrossFit that we got a whiteboard with a little bit of a leaderboard on it. Uh, we did this mostly to track individual progression, not to create competition amongst people, but some people are naturally competitive, so they see how other people score, they want to do better. We mostly want to see, we want to be able to gauge your performance increase from one week to the next and month to month. So we can see some people on the board, even though we've only been tracking this for about a week or two, we already have people that have made almost 50% increases in efficiency on the bike, meaning somebody that burned uh, a little over 25 calories the first time they did it burned 43 the next. Um, that's not calories in their body. We're gonna have, we've got Rashad hooked up to a heart rate monitor, so we're gonna show the difference between calories and as an energy uh, burnt on the bike versus what's happening in your body. Uh, in two minutes, your body's not gonna burn a ton of calories. It's just, it's a really short period of time. What's really effective about this style of exercise is what we're gonna call the afterburn. Rashad's metabolism is gonna be skyrocketed for quite a while when he's done. If I just walk on this treadmill for an hour, that's fine. That's perfectly uh, acceptable exercise to do. But when I step off that treadmill of kind of gentle exercise for an hour, my metabolism goes back to baseline pretty fast. The higher the intensity of the exercise we do, the longer the afterburn, which means his metabolic rate is going to stay elevated for a long period of time. And in terms of longevity, as long as we're doing things safe, meaning I'm not being irresponsible and doing a form of exercise that my body can't handle, uh, research is very clear and there are experts out there that study longevity, uh, guys like Peter Atia and uh, Dom D'Agostino, who recommend high intensity strength training as being the most valuable form of exercise uh, for longevity. So without further ado, we're gonna set up four rounds of 20 seconds of hard pedaling and 10 seconds of recovery for Rashad on the airdyne. We're gonna take a look. He's right now at 44 calories a Last one, ride the hips, cut the arms, 
right? The steady state, the different. Five seconds. And we'll recover for 10, keep pedaling, don't stop then. Nice little recovery. So the hard work's done. He's just going to do 10 seconds of recovery pedaling. Breathe, 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 and we're done. All right, so he scored 51. 51 calories on the bike. We'll let Rashad go walk around and stretch out. If we look, his heart rate topped out at 190 beats a minute. That's a lot. So again, we would clearly clear anyone before they do this kind of exercise. Uh, and it says, so he burned, he started at 44 calories on his heart rate monitor, or up to uh, 88. So about 44 calories in his actual body. So clearly the number on the bike doesn't match. So anybody that's on a treadmill, you're on that treadmill for an hour, it says you burn X number of calories. Guess what? That's probably an overestimation. Uh, wearing a heart rate monitor is going to be a lot more um, precise in terms of, and even that's slightly an estimation. The number's not important. The bottom line is we know that there's a huge afterburn associated with this kind of exercise where Rashad's metabolism is gonna stay elevated for a long period of time. We do use that calorie number though as a great way to track progress. So we can see from one week to the next week, is your workout program actually working? Are you becoming more fit? Uh, are we becoming more efficient? That's the key to health and longevity is I want my body to be super, super efficient. Uh, screen yourself for mobility issues so that we can become bulletproof and then you can do anything you want. You can play sports, you can work out, you can go gardening, you can do whatever you want and be injury free in a short period of time.